Hello, we're going to have a look at an integral and this is not a standard integral. When you look at it, you don't immediately think, oh, that's one of the ones that I can do instantly. So I'm going to need to use some kind of integration technique. Now the main techniques you've got in integration, really uh, two main ones, substitution and integration by parts. Doesn't look like it lends itself to integration by parts because I haven't got products or nice things I can choose here. So probably some kind of substitution. Now substitutions are not unique, so there's various ways you can tackle this. You might like to try, I'll just put it over the side here because I'm not going to do this, but you might like to try. You might look at this and say, well, I want to get rid of that square root sign. So one thing you could do is to try putting uh, u squared equals x. So you could try that because then when you take the square root of x, that'll turn it into a u. And that's a nice exercise to try. I want to show you just sl some slightly different way of doing it. I'm going to, in fact, put, um, I'm going to put 5 plus the square root of x. I'm going to call all of that just u. I'm going to call all of that just u on the bottom there. So I better rearrange this then. So that says x then is u minus 5 all squared. And in order to substitute everything in, well, I can replace that with u. I can work out what the numbers are. I've got to work out what the dx uh, part here is. So I'm going to differentiate both sides of this with respect to u. So I get two brackets u minus 5. And I don't like to write it, but you can sort of think of pulling the du up to there and thinking of dx is 2u minus 5 du. You do that in your mind rather than um, literally, because I'm not quite sure what it means when I start to split up this dx du. It's, it's really manipulating the symbols, but if you worry about the meaning, then you might get yourself slightly confused. So I'll think of pulling it up there, but I won't formally write it down. I better check the two endpoints. So when x is 0, then I can plug that in, I get u is 5. And when x is equal to 4, I plug that in back up into here and I get 7. So change the endpoints as you go. Some people just look at the indefinite integral and then they work all that out, then they put it back in terms of x and then they put the endpoints in. This makes life more complicated. Change the endpoints, it's very easy. Change the endpoints as you go. And then you haven't got to worry about x. We're getting rid of x out of the problem, replacing everything in terms of u. I should give this a name, so I'll, give it a, I'll call this integral i. Always a good idea to give integrals names. Then you can refer back to them. So therefore, this integral i now becomes the 0 turned into a 5, the, seven, the 4 turns into a 7 when we change variable, the dx, as I suggested, becomes 2, u minus 5 du and remember the denominator I gave all of that a name I just called that u. Now by the way you might like to as I said you should try doing this other method and compare and contrast and you'll see that at this stage you end up with uh, factors of u in the denominator that then you have to do division and it makes it more complicated so this actually is a slightly easier um, perhaps less obvious, but slightly easier way of doing this problem. Well, now I can just divide. So I get 2u on u gives me 2 minus 10 over u du. And now we smile happily because that's a nice easy integral. So that just gives me 2u minus 10 log u. We're happy now because we have a nice easy integral. And now we plug in the endpoints and subtract. So I'm going to get uh, 4 here, minus 10 log. I'll get log 7 minus log 5. And the log laws tell, tell me that I can write that as 7 over 5. And that's the end of the integral. Again, I suggest you try the other method and compare and contrast and see which one, you, you must get the same answer, see which one you think is the better solution. Mm -hmm.